Welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns, and I'm joined today by one of my best friends, Ann Burke, who is the author of Antarja. She is everything in Tarja that I wish I could be, so I'm bringing her here today to help me introduce some different skills to you guys. We have already done a really great learn how to do intarsia video, which you can check out in that little link right there, that I button, you can find that. And uh, I'm gonna let Anne take it away from here. Well, the biggest complaint I hear from people about intarsia, and you know, sometimes knitting in general. Yes, always. Is weaving in ends. Yes. We don't like it. Yes. And uh, it's, you know, we're not sewers, right? We're knitters. No. So we don't like to do it. But when we do do it, we want it to be invisible and we want it to stay put, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, and we want it to be fast. And we want it to be fast. Oh. And we want it to be easy. Not that we are picky or anything, <laughs> but that's what we want. And and you know what? We're gonna get it. All right. Okay, so um, what gave me the idea is the thing that everybody hates about intarsia is our secret weapon for getting rid of the ends. So if you'll remember, this is the bag I showed in uh, another lesson made out of Red Heart's fabulous new yarn, Chic Sheep, which is bird. <laughs> unbelievable to work with. I cannot recommend it enough. So this is what it looks like on the right side. That's good, but this is what it looks like on the wrong side. I am so impressed that your the inside of your work is just as beautiful as the outside. Yeah, and I that's, just gotta say that. And that's what we all want, isn't it? So if you can zoom in and sort of look this is where the end is the end is buried in there and uh, there's a lot of ends here i've got i've got two main color ends and the uh diamond color the red color and they're all in there and you you know you you might be able to tell but not really and that's because i have buried them inside the links now what gave me the idea for this is having those links because yarn is full of air mm -hmm. and that's why when we you know, are on a trip to visit our best friend and we buy too much yarn, if we sit on our suitcase, we can make it close. <laughs> <laughs> and it helps if your friend's a big girl, too. <laughs> yeah, well, well, yeah. Aww. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, brother. So, you know, so the, I thought, you know, if I could get a piece of yarn inside of another piece of yarn and hide it, how great would that be, mm -hmm. right? So in order to do that, we need a special tool, and I'm going to tell you about that. So you all know about our yarn needles, and we love our yarn needles. They're so handy. They've got great big eyes so we can get our yarn in them, and our blunt tips so that we don't damage any yarn. But of course, with my technique, we're so going to damage the yarn. You're going to go right inside it, so we need a different tool. So what we're going to use is called a chenille needle. Now, sometimes tapestry needles uh, will work and and a lot of people want to use those but with tapestry needles they have large eyes but sometimes they have blunt tips and sometimes they have sharp tips so you have to check this is called a chenille needle and it's just like the fabric c-h-e-n-i-l-l-e -L -L -E. yeah and it has a really really sharp tip you yeah, can get a splinter out with that sharp. sucker it, and uh and it also has a pretty large eye they are found in um all of your uh stores that have embroidery supplies. Um, Joann's has them. In fact, I think that might be where I bought these. If you get to a Joann's and they don't have any chenille needles, I probably got there first. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Because uh, I buy them to give out of my classes. They come in various sizes. They come in 18, 20, and 22. The smaller the number, the larger the eye. So these are a size 18. With an 18, I can get anything from a bulky down to a fingering weight. Uh, 22 is good for lace weight, 20 anything below sport weight. Um, but the size 18, you can really mash a lot of yarn in there, again, because you're getting rid of the air, right? Okay. 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 So uh, now what we're gonna do with that sharp tip is we're going to get inside the yarn. Okay. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. And this works with all types of yarn. I just want to mention yes. it's not just good with Chic Sheep by Marley Bird. You can use it with any yarn, um, wool, acrylic, cotton, anything. Yeah. Um, we just happen to be showing it on this fabulous new yarn. Yes. <laughs> so with threading my needle, I like to pinch really hard over the, uh, the yarn over the needle 
and then I force that needle through the thumb and the forefinger, okay, like that. Now, if you are having trouble with that, this is a worsted weight yarn, so mm -hmm. this is pretty thick, right? So maybe you're having trouble. Take it over the pointy end, which is even tinier, and that will give you maybe even a little tinier edge. If you have a bulky yarn, what you could do is spread it out and then put it over your needle and now it's super, super thin and will go through your eye. I'm gonna bury this end and I'm going to bury it into the yarn. So I am going through the plies. My finger is underneath to make sure that I don't go to the right side, but you can hardly see my needle there. So when I pull it through, it hardly even disrupts the stitches, but it's inside the yarn. And it's through the links, not the actual stitches. Through the links. Okay. It is not through the fabric, it's through the links, the, they're extra. And now, because this is machine washable, mm -hmm. it is not gonna fall, it's not gonna felt, nothing's gonna glue it. So it probably won't come out because it's inside the yarn, but it might. So I'm always a little cautious. So I like to go in very close to where I came out and just double back a little bit. About a quarter inch is all you gotta do. And then I cut it off immediately because if I don't, I won't be able to tell I buried it and I might bury it again and then it starts getting bulky. So just that little bit right there, that's it. That's all it is. And it's just gonna stay. Yes. Even after washing it, like a hundred times, it's gonna be all right. Yeah, there's a couple rules about burying ends. You have to have some material to bury it into and you better make sure you don't wanna take it out because this is a permanent move. You, oh you will, it's now inside the yarn, especially if you do this. Yeah. Now it's, now, because I cut it off at the base, it's inside, you can't get it out. Oh my gosh. It's gone. So this is completely different from weaving in your ends. When you're yes. weaving your ends, it's a completely different technique. This is burying your ends in the links here, but you can also use this if you are burying your ends on seams of a sweater, right? Yes, okay, so that's the next question everybody has. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic, can I always do yeah. it? Okay, so what you can do it on uh, anything with texture. You have to have something to bury it into, right? So it works great with intarsia links, but it also works, I could do it here. I could do it on the side. Um, if, you're, if you're seaming, sometimes I'll just bury my ends anyway because it makes it really sharp and clear and then I don't have to bury them into the seam, but you certainly could bury it in the seam. But look what happens, thank you, darling. <laughs> so look what happens here when I bury it into the side. See, I'm just going inside yes. there, and it's gone. Yeah. Absolutely gone. Boy, I should have pinned this I'm scarf gonna up. I'm going to help you. Yeah. Okay. So, but then look how good it looks, right? It's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I'm just, it's gone. That's it. It's a one, like two seconds. punch. Like seconds. Oh, yeah. Seconds. It's seconds. So I'm sitting here, and I'm like, okay. Do not obsess about this. How great Boom, boom. Yeah, you should be able to tell them how fast I cleaned right? up your blanket. Mitered squares. I had a mitered square blanket, you guys, ends everywhere. I was showing it in a class and Ann said to me, no, 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 you can't bring that to class with all those ends hanging out. I said, Ann, I don't have time to weave in all these ends. She said, give that to me. She sat down on the bed, 30, 45 minutes tops. She had all of the ends woven in on this blanket and I defy you to find where any of those ends are if you flip it around. It is amazing how wonderful it is. And I mean, I'm looking at this, I'm like, this is fantastic for intarsia. This is fantastic for mitered squares. Um, mm -hmm. You could absolutely do this with um, granny squares for crochet or any sort of yeah. crochet items, because especially because crochet is very thick, you know, you have you have whole stitches to go through. Um, I tend to do that anyways. Yeah. That's exactly how I weave in my ends for crochet. The only thing I wouldn't do is I, in, I wouldn't them. do it on stockinette. There just isn't enough here, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could. I mean, you could snake along here, but it's it's gonna it might distort your fabric. Well, here's a question for mm -hmm. you: What if you were to take the the end? and take the plies apart and take two of the plies and go up the stockinette one side and two of the plies. So like you, you, you make the yarn thinner to be able to work it up. Would that work? Yes. And yeah. that's, that's the way a lot of people do like with weaving in uh -huh. where they'll, for me, that's just too fussy. Yeah. It's that a lot takes, of work. That's a lot of work and a lot of time. <laughs> I'm saying? not willing to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not willing to do that. So, um, you know, if I, if I'm working with something that is, uh, machine washable mm -hmm. is not going to, I can't spit splice, which is my favorite yes. form of joining. Um, but if I can't do that, I'm probably gonna 
frankly do it in pieces and seam oh it. Gosh, I love it. I think it's so amazing. Yeah. Every time she shows this in class, people are just in awe of it. <laughs> um, I know that it was fascinating for me to sit there on the other bed and watching you just <laughs> weave in these. Hits. She was like, snip, 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 snip. And I was like, oh, I hope this doesn't come undone. And it's it's perfect. Well, so it's let me perfect. let me tell you what I do because everybody also says, when do you do it? Do you wait till you're done? Do you do it in a process? Right. So I do it whenever I feel like it. If I'm doing a project, like maybe I'm tired of knitting, um, or sometimes I'm just really in the zone. I just finish it, and then I look at the back and I go, "Oh my goodness, that's a lot of spaghetti back there." Uh, so a couple of tips when you're doing intarsia, when you stop using a color, cut it off with your five-inch ends. So you mm -hmm. don't have unnecessary yarn butterflies in your back. Um, and also, when you're going to bury your ends, make it a project. I sit down with my knitting and my chenille needle and my scissors and, you know, good light and a TV show that's interesting or a book. And uh, But it's got to be an audio book because I'm actually watching. When yeah. I knit, I don't watch it, but I'm, when, when I'm burying my ends, I do. So just something to entertain me. And I just, I just sit and, you know, like it, it looks terrible. 20 minutes later, it's all clean, and I've got this nice little pile of ends. It's so satisfying. That is so awesome. It's like, wow, yay, <laughs> and, and you're done. I love this. Um, I think it's absolutely fitting that you're able to show people how they can weave in, not weave in, bury their ends yep. so perfectly, so quickly, uh, because you're the queen of intarsia, <laughs> which intarsia is all about color, explosions of color, which your scarf shows, which shows in the projects you've done for me, um, and it's pretty darn great. So I can't wait for all of you to run out and get some chenille needles and try this technique, burying your ends. If you do, please share with us on Facebook. <gasps> can I, I am say the smash? Yes, I am facebook.com forward slash Marleybird. You are facebook.com forward slash Antarja. The links will be provided in the video description box below. And while you're down there, smash the like button. <laughs> we appreciate it so much. Thank you so much, Ann Burke, for joining me today. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns. And you can learn more about Intarja, Antarja, and the brand new Chic Sheep by Marley Bird Yarn, again, in the description box below. See you guys next time. Bye. Now that you can do intarsia, you can make the Chic Sheep Dream Blanket. Say that three times fast. Or if you want to learn more about intarsia, get Anne's book, Antarsia Knits. Everything you need to know about knitting or crochet can be found right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Learn with Marley Bird. Visit youtube.com forward slash Marley Bird.